Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Go Professional Cases in San Diego. We came to visit Rick and Beth in their natural environment. Let's go find them. Hi guys! Hey, oh, hey. hey! How you doing? Good to see you! Good to see you! Come on in! Thanks! Wow Rick, so we've known you for like two years now and this is the first time we've ever been to your shop. This is a lot of fun having you here and this is our new place. It's been uh, <laughs> six, seven months that we've been here. Wow. Bigger and better. And it looks like we've just come into your showroom here. Absolutely. Well, I think fun thing that people really need to know, Go Professional Cases is actually not your first case business or even your only case business at this point. Case Man came first, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that business? Sure, Case Man has been around for 21 years and we've been in the industrial high-tech markets, working with Lockheed Martin, Boeing's, Health Sciences Industries. Not as consumer oriented, let's say, as the drones necessarily. By no means. <laughs> when you're dealing with the military and prime vendors, those buyers are just going out and doing their job every day and grinding for the price and looking at the bottom line. And there's, you know, even though there's a certain amount of art with creating a nice case and a quality case in those markets, with what we're doing now, we're dealing with artists and we're dealing with fun products that everybody's excited. It's just, it's moving at such an incredibly fast pace. We, we first met two years ago at the Multi Rotor Challenge. What, tell us what the what that's been, because I know you were just kind of getting started at that point. You were making cases for GoPros. We started off with the GoPro cameras originally about four years ago, and then realized that how the market was changing, moving the GoPros to the copters, and that really kind of got the whole thing started. Why use water jetting as opposed to some other technology? We're using the water jet compared to the CNC and die cutting because of the amount of detail that we can have in our work. We can have a lot of cavities in a small area with very thin walls, which you could never do with CNC because the bit is going to push the foam and distort the foam or even grab the foam and tear it up. So the water jetting allows us just to pack a lot more into a case. All right, so what are you working on that's brand new right now? One of the things that we're working on is the 3D aerobatic copters like the Curtis Youngblood, Stingray, and Bobby Watts Invertex 400. They're very delicate because of the mechanics that they've got in them, and it's really important to keep those uh, protected in the cases. And here we are upstairs at our corporate offices from our uh, showroom downstairs, Julia and customer service. And then down the hallway here, we've got uh, Beth's in my office, and then to the left, we have our design department. All right, Rick, so I guess this is where the magic happens, huh? That it is. I do a great deal of the original designing of the products, and once I get done with the design and the initial layout, then I bring it here to our production facility and give it to Kevin, and Kevin takes my original drawings and looks at how it needs to be produced, manufactured, layered, and he also does the uh, water jet uh, programming for us. All right, Kevin, you want to show us how this works? Absolutely. So what we do here is we take some of Rick's layouts. We take the two-dimensional over here, and we take a look at see how things lay out, and then we plop them over into a three-dimensional model to see if we'll run into any problem before we actually produce one. And then from there, we can come out with an ultimate piece like what we have over here off to the side. This, we get to see the culmination of the teamwork between Rick's original design and some alterations to accommodate uh, to be able to make a piece like this. One of the great advantages of the water jet is that it's very easy for you to just go into the computer and make some tweaks to some individual customer's needs, or if an aircraft changes a few centimeters in dimension, it's not a big deal at all to make those changes. Absolutely. That's the great thing about the water jet. We make the quick change on the layout, we pass it over to the water jet program, and run it from there. There's no need to change any sort of physical dies or other sort of hardware. All right, Rick, should we see how the phone gets cut? Absolutely, we'll go to production and Chris will give you the tour. Oh, hey Chris, how you doing? Rick, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. This way? So Chris, what are we looking at here exactly? Basically, after the design team has it designed out, we bring it to this machine and cut out the interior of the cases. Well, what we're doing right now is a process called water jet cutting. We're using about 50,000 pounds of pressure to cut through the foam right now. So I, I take it I shouldn't try to take a nice relaxing shower under those little streams in there. You'd be very unhappy and very uh, bloody if you did that. Ouch, so this is, this is like water being used as a razor blade. Absolutely. We use the blue cap foam so everybody knows it's a GoPro case. What's nice about cutting with water is it's very, very precise. There's not a better way to cut foam. We can cut logos out and all the cavities are very precise. 
It's just neat to watch it work and a little spooky knowing how much force this thing packs. Absolutely, it's a nice piece of machinery. In this configuration, we're cutting three at a time. Depending on the size of the case, we can cut more or less, but this is a pretty large case that we're cutting. We are running at three out. Ah, got it, okay, cool. All right, Chris, so I take it this is the brains of the outfit right here. What the computer's doing now is it's telling us the uh, feed rate, how many inches per second it's gonna cut, how much time left in the program, so we could use this uh, software to plan ahead of what we're gonna cut throughout the day. And Now I notice if you look closely, you can see a little thing tracing it around. As the foam is being cut, little tick follows where the cutting is actually being done. And then I notice something that looks like a steam gauge on there or something. What is that telling us? That's sort of a uh, speedometer on how fast the machine is cutting. When the water's coming out, it's going to generally cut a little bit slower, and then when it has to move to a different point, it speeds up a little. So we got those three big digits on there in red, blue, and green. What's that? The red, green, and blue numbers are the X and Y axis of where the heads are as the machine is cutting away the foam. So it's pretty cool. Okay, Chris, so we've arrived at what I assume is the employee recreation area with the Swedish massage machine here, something behind us. This machine is called a convoluter, and basically it's a compression cutter, and uh, the lid foam that you see in the cases with the A-crate style, that's what this machine does. So not so friendly, maybe don't send your back through there. You wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Alright Chris, so I came through the water jet experience with all my fingers and toes, what are we off to here? You made it through the Swedish uh, massage machine. Yeah, that's right, I did not interact with the Swedish massage machine, so this is an above average factory visit for me. What we got happening here? Well, in this section, what we do is we uh, bond the layers together with glue. Oh, okay, so when you cut one of these, it's not the full thickness for the case, so you sort of build up a stack. Sometimes we cut uh, the whole piece, and sometimes we cut layers to get the depths that we need. All right, why don't you take us from the beginning here, what they're doing there, and then the middle station, and then we got all the way to here at the end. After we cut the pieces out, they take the parts that we don't need, or the plugs out, and then we come over to this area and we have a robotic gluing machine that dispenses the glue where we want it. And then what happens here at the final stage? Then basically it's simply built up and then trimmed down. All of this foam is made in California. It's all American made, 100%. That's awesome. You don't hear that near enough these days. You hear it a lot more often. Well, Rick, thanks so much for the tour. This has been incredible. It's great having you here. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm hoping we won't be too long till we're back in San Diego again, because we had a good time here. Good, I'm happy to hear it. Make sure to have your GPS on to get home. All right, we will, we will. Hate to have you not end up in Portland. <laughs> no, no, that would be bad. <laughs> Take care, Rick. <laughs> so that was our visit to Go Professional Cases in San Diego. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. <laughs>